He knew those questions were coming. But also because, like, Alex is human, and he has family and agents yeah. who tell him stuff, and he, he can read. He sure. sees what's happening, yeah. you know. Um, we know that the Chiefs read my mock drafts. John Dorsey. Uh, by the way, can we get some sort of bumper on that? Can we get some sort of like? Yeah. I want to. I want to. I want to feature that a little more. Read um, and endorse. Read and, en- and endorse. All right. How about uh, that? How about that? <laughs> oh, okay. We got some feedback. Yeah, feedback the feedback's, feedback's right always good. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's jump into my all juice team a little bit and somebody that. Hey, wait, 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 hold on. real quick before you do this, you had this. Um, I don't know if it's been in the paper, but online this morning I was reading it. A little bit of an explanation of the All Juice team. This is not the twenty your favorite twenty two prospects, right? Like, right. Explain just a little bit how you do it, how you pick it, why, why those guys are there. Well, I just like guys that love football and play with energy and have alpha personality. So I, I take that into account. But I don't just take like the best twenty two guys right. at every position. Like especially this year, I tried to come up with like a fun, like uh, a, a fun like team building yeah. exercise. So basically when I go through my extensive drop draft process, which is absurd, and I always say I'm never gonna do it again and I always get sucked back Nobody in. Believes that, yeah. yeah. Except me for like five seconds. Do you really? Uh, man, I really do. I'm You're like about this time <laughs> about this time of year, I appreciate the payback, it's good. Um, about this time of year I'm just like tired. I'm like, who signs up for that? Like I'm not but anyway, my point is like I grade all these guys, I assign them first round grades, third round grades. And I just thought it'd be fun this year to make sure I have a variety of mm-hmm. prospects. So what I did was I took two players with each grade, and I created a 22-man team based on that. So my grade scale goes from 7.5 to 6.0, right? So from 7.5 to 7.1, I took two prospects. And, and, that's, and that's, that's a first round. That's an elite top, top 10, 10 player. Right. Yeah. Top 10. right. 7.0 is 11 to 20, right? And I got two players from there. Seven, you know, 6.9, a lot of 6.9 prospects in this year's draft, 21 to 32, and then it's right on down the line, scaled right? Down. Scaled down. So there's second round picks on this team, third round picks, fourth round guys, all kinds of guys that I kind of project. So it was a fun process, uh, team building exercise, and I encourage you guys to do it too. It's just kind of fun if you watch tape. Um, so there's some guys that we've Which talked. Which means I just want to be clear, like for people watching, it means that the guy that, that you have on the All Juice team may or may not be your your absolute favorite prospect yeah. at that position. Absolutely, you, right. You These are just guys I like yeah, with value. Uh-huh. Thank you. Appreciate you doing that. Um, Anytime, Therese. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, so one guy, obviously, uh, I think we're really all prepared to talk about is Patrick Mahomes. He's a player that I think is in play at number 27. I think he's a player they like. They've interviewed him extensively. You guys have fallen in love with him. A large part of that is because he's of one of you. you guys you know. Um, <laughs> because right? of you. Yeah, because of me, right? But he's, he's, his name is been band- bandied about a lot. And when it comes to the draft, fans kind of want their team to draft players they know because that's sure. all they know. They haven't done, right? So, But I, I think with Mahomes, there's actually a real reason to fall in love with him. And in late in the process, I actually, he actually edged out Deshaun Watson from my all-juice quarterback spot. And the reason I did that is because he's just a lot of fun to watch. And the upside is real. And honestly, the Gruden QB camp swayed me a little bit watching it too. You saw Watson stumble a little bit, getting over some of those verbiage calls. Um, you know, Gruden didn't ask Mahomes to do it, but I'm watching this, the tape and you just see the reinforcement with the creativity in the arm. And he's just a really well spoken kid, and I think he has leadership potential. And I think he's young, he comes off as young. He's 21, he should, right? he should, Yeah, he should not yeah. play a snap this year. Yeah. Oh, he, he comes off as young. He probably needs two years, right? Mm-hmm. None of the none of these quarterbacks, I Absolutely. think, are, are going to be starters next year. And Sam, like you say, you're like a, a B version of me when it comes to being a <laughs> dork about the tape. Um, you've watched the quarterback extensively as well. What do you think about the decision to go with, Watt, with Mahomes over Watson, and would you have done that? I still like Watson a little bit more than Mahomes. Just uh, Mahomes' footwork freaks me out. And, and the, the penchant that he has for just making these wild decisions of mm-hmm. just, you know, sort of just drops your jaw. What in the hell was he looking at right there? Decisions. Now, uh, maybe that thinking on my part isn't taking into account enough the fact that he would hopefully have at least a year, maybe two, uh, with some good coaching where you, you can, you know, sort of smooth out some of those rough grades. But I'd be thrilled. I love both of them. What, what I tell you is that I think Peterman of those quarterbacks is the one guy that could be your backup this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know, probably closest, closest to being yeah. if, the if number, you don't, number two guy. Yeah. If you don't believe in Tyler Bray, he's. He, I agree with that. You know, there's 
there's some there's some good stuff there with him. But one, oh, I'm but, sorry. Oh, it's sort of more of a question for you, Therese. What what do you see as the difference between what you, you're choosing your favorite quarterback out of this group? What's the difference between what your criteria is and what the Chiefs' criteria is, and who's right? I care about finding Pro Bowls. Like I want, I'm if I'm gonna draft a quarterback, I'm gunning for top five quarterback. I'm gunning for, you know, I'm shooting for the moon because if I can hit it, I'm, my job's safe for ten years, right? That's what I'm looking for. And is, is that how they? You assume they think? I don't. Not, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think Andy Reid wants someone that's gonna do what he tells him to do which makes me a little concerned about Mahomes. But I will say this. Patrick Mahomes is reckless with the football, but the NFL can humble you. The yeah. NFL oh, will humble you. Oh, you attempt that. It's not just Andy Reid getting on you. It's your offensive lineman. It's Travis Kelsey. It's Jeremy Macklin saying, what the F are you doing? Don't do that again. And I think Mahomes is pliable enough to be reeled in. Yeah, and I also want to say this about Pat Mahomes, and I'm speculating a little bit here, but – his sort of wild decision making, that may be what he's coached to do. Like Cliff Kingsbury wants to sling it around a little bit, you know. Like I, I think Kingsbury absolutely <laughs> yeah, seems like slimming. a coach who's yeah. okay with a mistake if later you make two good plays. Right. It's and so maybe point. he's like, you know, just responding to the coach. And and also like, you know, you know what it takes to win an NFL playoff game against a good team. No. Guts. Uh, no, nobody here. Nobody Guts. here who's watching. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Tell us, Uncle Therese. Well, not like I would know. I'm a Giants fan, for God's sake. My team's won one playoff game. It's not like I know, but it takes guts. It takes what Marcus Peters talks about. Let him hang, young blood. Let him hang. You got to have that, you know. You got to let I think as Patrick Mahomes grows as a player, as long as he's nurtured and not thrown to the fire, boy, two years as an apprentice, mm -hmm. that'd be pretty tempting to me, mm -hmm. right? Can you imagine two years with Pat Mahomes as an apprentice? Not even one, two. Yeah. You give him two, that's hey man. He'll had a lot. He'll had a stuff down. No, no real pressure. You know, I, I'd, I'd like. All right. It. Two, two thoughts on that. First, I just want. I'm wondering aloud here. What is it? What's the value of uh, being the son of a former Major League Baseball player, having you know the sort of the athletic pedigree and and the, having grown up with a dad who was a professional athlete? But more importantly, what would what would the Chiefs have to do in the draft to put themselves in a position to get Mahomes? It's tough. Because Good question. he ain't he ain't gonna be there at 27. I, I think we are increasingly seeing it's gonna be tough for him to be there. You never really know about this time of year. To get into the teens, you might have to give up top 100 picks. I don't think I don't know if Dorsey wants to do that. I don't know if he likes that. For a guy that's not going to play. Would you? Yes. Would you guys we're, give we're, up? We're maybe 18. Yeah. Okay. Let's say you got to get. Let's go to the high high end of it. Let's say that to, to get Mahomes, you got to get to 12. That's probably that's, your first this year. Yeah. That's and, a and third. The, the, this year. the Browns are at 12, right? Exactly. The, yeah. Right. That's a third, or let's say 11. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Get to 11. That's a first this year. That's a third this year. That's a second next year, and probably maybe even a third or fourth next year. Who who does that here? My hands mm, now. The, mm -hmm. probably would you do the, that? the stuff the next year's picks is what would scare me off a little. You don't bit. trade I, I would top hundred picks. Trade picks here th this year because you, you've said it a hundred times. We've all said it. Like ten guys aren't making this team from this draft. I, I would spend whatever or, draft picks this year. So that's the option, unless. And we're just going to talk quarterbacks because, come on, that's what we want to talk about. That's so would you rather give up all those picks from Holmes or would you stay where you're at, take position player, take Peterman in a second, and use those extra picks on redshirt guys? By redshirt guys, I mean guys that can't help you this year but will help you next year and would be drafted higher than you get them this year and will have roster spots next year. So... Jake Butt from Michigan, really good tight end. Really good tight end, like Anthony Fasano is not quite the blocker, but could be a really reliable number two tight end. Second best tight end in the draft behind the, the old Miss. A lot of people feel that way, yeah. right? Um, Sidney Jones from Washington, compared to Marcus Peters by some, probably won't play this year. Be ready, you know. He could be a guy that you'll have roster spots next for. Philip Gaines probably won't be back. So, and, so would you rather have your backup quarterback this year and really set yourself well for the future next year, or would you give up those picks? Or 
would you eschew the position player and take Deshaun Kaiser, who I do think will be there? And there's somebody I am going to mention uh, in my mock draft as an option because – Quarterback of the four and eight Notre Dame fighting. There's a real issue there with the intangibles, but if you watch the Gruden QB camp with him, he looked good, didn't he? He did look great, and he's the most well-spoken of the bunch. He's intelligent, but you didn't see he has a big gun. You didn't see Peterman, who was really good. Okay, right. Okay, good to know. Um, He has the best. He has one of the best arms of the group. Mahomes has the gun. Mm -hmm. Mahomes has the yeah, Um, (laughs) and he's the biggest. He, he's the one that fits the NFL profile of quarterback with the athleticism to run what they want to do. Sam, you looked at Kaiser. I just gave you a bunch of options. What would you do? I don't like Kaiser at all. I, I just really don't. Oh, so they're definitely taking him out. Colin Ridley. Like, I mean, obviously, right? Like, I think we're all smart enough to know what we don't know. Right. And if, if they're in love with him, then whatever. They've spent 60,000 hours on this yes. stuff. Just which yesterday. Is, yeah, <laughs> which is a few thousand more than I've spent. Uh, but I, I just don't I, – four and eight, uh, wildly inaccurate throws at times. Uh, th- there's just a lot missing beyond – he looks the part. My goodness. Like, physically, so gifted. <laughs> Uh, he looks the part, but there's just a lot missing if I'm going to take him in the first round. Uh, to me, if, if uh, you know, the 59,000 and however many more hundred hours <laughs> that I would put into it, if it led me to be as in love with uh, Pat Mahomes or Deshaun Watson as I suspect I would with that much more time, I'd be aggressive. If, if you see your guy and you have these extra picks, you, you, you're perfectly situated to be able to, you know, to use the term to redshirt him, maybe even double redshirt the guy. Uh, give him the best opportunity possible. It's the most important position. I, I just think if, if if you're in love with a guy, be aggressive, go do it. What well, about you guys? Here's a question. Yeah. It, well, a couple questions. One is, where, where's Kaiser going to go? Where, where? What is he? Is he, he it, people are saying he's a second round pick. He's a second round pick. Okay. And just, I, I actually really like him in the second round. I wouldn't hesitate to do it in the second round. Uh, there's a part of me that wonders if maybe – you know, he's getting a bit of a bad rap because on the surface, like, there's a lot there to like. And, like, the scouts can go in there. And, like, I told you guys, I took the trip to Notre Dame that Sam enjoyed making fun of. Um, <laughs> and I asked his teammates for, like, some kind of, some kind of stories about him. Like, and they couldn't do it. So that scares you. Yeah, right, right, right. But he's also 21. He's, like, one of the youngest quarterbacks in here. So and I think he just turned 21. So a chance to grow up a little bit and mature. What if you put him on the double redshirt program? You know, maybe he matures into that. You put him in the room with Alex Smith and, you know, where he can kind of soak that up and watch it and, like, see how to approach it. I don't know, man. There's a part of me that thinks that he's going to end up being a good quarterback for somebody. So just a point of clarity here, though. You think, basically, if they, if they want Mahomes or Watson, they're going to have to trade up. I think so, And yes. if, they, if they settle for is the wrong term because if they've yeah. identified – Either other guys, Peterman or Peter, yeah, Peterman or Kaiser. I, I lean toward getting as many good players as possible. I I don't know if I like Mahomes or Watson enough to surrender that bounty. I like my picks. My thought on them would be also, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't say you only trade for a once in a generation player, right? But what is that cutoff? I mean, is this the kind of guy that's only going to be available once every five years? Is, is that what they are? I think that's Sam Darnold next year. Yeah, <laughs> I, I do. I do yeah. too. I, I do too. I don't. You know, you, you like Pro Bowl players in the draft. I, I don't know if there is a future Pro Bowl quarterback quarterback in this draft. It's just it's funny. The, the year the Chiefs had the the one one, that was that was the year. Eric Fisher was the guy, and he's the been year a, after Andrew Luck, right? And you, exactly after, <laughs> after Andrew Luck. And I don't, maybe maybe the timing's not right for the Chiefs this year to to take the you know to to look at Watson or Mahomes in the first round. It, it's been a long time up. since the timing's been right. It, 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 the, the timing's been right several other times. You know, we know that, and, and they passed. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing. I, I I wouldn't have a hesitation about moving up if one of those guys falls into the 20s. Then you talking talk about giving like a third up. Gladly. Yeah. Let's go. Right. Yeah. Let's right. do it. Right. Hey, you know, hey, who cares? All right, take the pick. Whatever. You know, but into the teens, no. I don't know. But but Or you could not, okay, let's say Kaiser's not the guy. All right, you don't like Kaiser. Fine. A lot of Davis Webb talk. Yeah. Who I gave a 6'6 third round grade to. Yeah. I gave Kaiser a 6'9. I stand by it too. Like, I think you can do worse to take a, a run on a 
six four, two hundred thirty pound guy with a gun, and he's articulate and smart. You know. So, but Davis Webb, Sam, you looked at him. Who saw Davis Webb? God, dude, I, don't know. I, I mean, remember but Tech. The yeah, and he didn't play at Tech. This no, past no, year. no, uh, he did not. Uh, uh, got beat out just, by just like just like just like. Josh Dobbs beat out Peterman at Tennessee. Remind me to get back to that. <laughs>